For the ninth time in its history, Germany is preparing to host a World Handball Championship. Ten years after organising the 2007 Men's Worlds, the land that was the birthplace of the game will be the nerve centre of the women's sport from the 1st to the 17th of December. After 1965 and 1997, this will be the third Women's World Championship to be staged on German soil. The 23rd edition brings together 24 nations from across five continents. Among them, Norway, the winners of the last tournament in Denmark two years ago, will put their title on the line. Some 250,000 spectators are expected to attend 84 matches in six host cities. We're expecting a great celebration, that's for sure. I hope it's going to be massive. It's always exciting to play a world championship and also this year will be really interesting to see. In Germany, even for second division games, the halls are full. So this is going to be a huge sporting celebration. I know in Germany it's really huge. I think it'll be a brilliant atmosphere, big crowds at the venues and that it will be a great celebration. The atmosphere will be really Really good. With a capacity of 12,500, the Barclay Card Arena in Hamburg will be the venue for the semi-finals and final. The Jetek Arena in Magdeburg, home to one of the top teams in the men's Bundesliga, will host key matches in the knockout phase. The Arena Leipzig with 6,200 seats will host Group D, featuring the home nation Germany. The Eger Trans Arena in Bietigheim Bissingen will be the venue in Group B. The Trier Arena, close to the border with Luxembourg, will welcome teams in Group A. And finally, more than 5,000 spectators will attend the EWE Arena in Oldenburg in Group C. The draw was held on the 30th of June in Hamburg in the presence of former Germany star Grit Jurak, who represented her country 306 times. The 24 teams are divided into four groups of six, with the top four sides in each pool advancing to the last 16, and the teams finishing fifth and sixth dropping into the President's Cup. France, Romania, Spain, Slovenia, Angola and Paraguay will clash in Group A. Norway, Sweden, the Czech Republic, Hungary, Argentina and Poland face off in Group B. Group C is made up of Denmark, Russia, Brazil, Montenegro, Japan and Tunisia. The Netherlands, Germany, Serbia, South Korea, China and Cameroon are in Group D. December the 30th, 2015, at the Nord Arena in the Danish town of Frederikshavn. Germany go down to a 28-22 defeat at the hands of future world champions Norway. The Germans bowed out of the world championship in the last 16. Two years later, the ladies find themselves organising their own world championship. This is huge. I don't think that playing a world championship in our country is something that happens often, so we need to make the most of it. We want to go as far as possible. I'd sign right away for a medal. We really want to make it to Hamburg at least for the semi-finals. Their objective will be to go as far as possible. Germany, at home, we know that teams get something extra from playing in front of their own support. There's always an incredible enthusiasm. So with that asset, they might be able to do great things. We're expecting it to be a great occasion. Obviously, the players will want to make a mark by producing a spectacle. And the staff in the German Federation have chosen to organise this World Championship. So they'll have ambitions of doing well and revitalising women's handball. The last time the National Mannschaft finished on the podium at the Worlds was 10 years ago, when they beat Romania to claim bronze in France. And it's now almost a quarter of a century since Germany won what remains their only world title. The German team have won one title in 93. That's quite a long time ago now. So it's clear that the Germans will want to achieve something this time at home. Do they have the means to do that? I hope so. We played in Hamburg not so long ago and the hall was packed full of people. Yes, of course, it's all about winning there. We're not at that stage yet, though. It's a long tournament. <laughs> a tournament for the Germans that will see them play in Leipzig in the group stage with a new coach at the helm in Michael Biegler, formerly in charge of the Poland men's team. It's going really well. We're very, very happy. 
He says what he thinks, which is good for us, because it's clear what he wants. There's a clear project to take us through to the World Championship, and we are trying to follow it with him and to do as well as possible in order, I hope, to go a long way in the tournament. A good dynamic has been built up with this coach, who is now in the women's game, so I think it will go well. He's taken a gamble by massively overhauling the team. There is now a whole host of youngsters in the German team, but the ladies can also count on the experience of some golden oldies. Playmaker Anna Lerper and goalkeeper Clara Voltering, who both won bronze in France in 2007, will have to guide their teammates towards the summit in front of their home supporters. We have good goalkeepers, that's for sure. Clara Voltering has already won the Champions League, which is huge. She has a lot of experience. Anna Lerper the same. She has more than 200 caps, which is incredible. I think of players who play in France, like Isabelle Klein, who we know. There's also Zenia Smits at Metz and Voltering, Volbold. But I think it's more their collective strength with these young players. It's true that the coach has chosen to put the emphasis on youth. I think that is the key, and that can help them to succeed. Drawn in Group D with the Netherlands and Serbia, Germany will target a top two place in their section. We always want to win, so if we can get first place in the group, that would be fantastic. I think the Netherlands are likely to take first place, but Germany are at home, so they can challenge Serbia and the other teams in the group. And I reckon second place can be their objective in this group. Germany will feature in the opening match on the 1st of December against Cameroon before facing Serbia on the 5th. But the big game in Group D will be on the 8th of December against the Netherlands in what should amount to a section decider. Seven European golds, two Olympic titles, three world crowns. Norway are to women's handball what France are to the men's game. The Nordic nation have won more titles than anyone else and are fresh from triumphs at the 2015 World Championship and the 2016 Euro. Both of those finals were won against the Netherlands. The final whistle. I was uh, really, really happy and very proud of my team. Uh, because I didn't have any gold medal in the World Championship and it's, it's like a girl's dream come true because you train so much and when you stand there and you win the gold, it's, everything is, yeah, you just, you're so happy. As defending European and World Champions, the Scandinavians will again be one of the big favourites. Handball is, is just very huge in Norway and they expect us to win a lot, so many girls and boys play handball and they sit every championship and watch the television. It's a lot of expectations from the, um, from the public because we always uh, have a good team and people expect us to win gold because we have so many gold medals. Uh, but that's a little sad also because I think there are so many good teams uh, in the world right now. It's not like, of course, we will win because we work so hard. And I think, um, I think they should think about what's behind the work and not just expect us to win everything. It's just incredible that they've been able to last like that for such a long time. 
and keep winning so many titles despite the changes of one generation to another. They're a team who are respected across the world by all other nations because they've been able to win a number of titles and podium places too. They're often in the final stages, in the fight, and they're able to play a game that really appeals to the viewers. Yes, Norway are definitely one of the favourites to win the title. In terms of their play, their spirit, their will to win, they have a winning culture that's quite incredible. And then they have a management team who are very competent and very good at analysing their opponents' play. In charge of the Norwegian team since 2009, the Icelander Torio Helgerisson continues to shape the identity instilled before him by Marit Breivik, the former coach. Focused on developing the confidence of his players, Helgerisson is an open coach who encourages his players to take responsibility. It's their collective intelligence that really makes the difference, and everyone is integrated and participates in their project. On the tactical side, they often get together to study videos, and you can see that the coach has a way of working that gets all his players cooperating. Before, he was the assistant to Marit Breivik. He's brought continuity and has carried on the work that was done before. He talks a lot to the players, he's very competent, and he knows women handball very well. But Norway are where they are today is thanks to him and also Marit, who did a lot of work beforehand. There's the collective, but there are also the individuals. At the 2015 World Championship in Denmark, three Norwegians were included in the team of the tournament, Nora Mörk, Heidi Loke and, of course, Stina Oftedal. Stina is also uh, an amazing player. She she's so smart and she has a lot of experience also. Um, I think she's one of the best playmakers in the world. Um, now when she is playing in Gerd, I think she will become even stronger. So yeah, she's one of the best. The players to follow in this Norway team, obviously there is Stina Oftedal. Nora Mörk, the little left-handed right-back, who's very dynamic and powerful, is another one to look out for. We should see a good association between Stina Oftedal and Nora Mörk, as they've been playing together this season for their club, Gior. So I imagine they will have further polished their relationship and that they're going to hurt opposition defences. As for the opposition attacks, they'll have to find a way past Norway's last line of defence. They have three top-class goalkeepers, but only two are likely to be called up. Katrina Lunde keeps going away and coming back, and she was again there during the qualifiers. Norway have top, top-class goalkeepers, with Grimsbo and Solberg too, who plays in France, for Issy Paris. So there's a lot of competition. Norway will have plenty of competition in Group B. Hergerisson's girls will have to come up against Poland, who finished fourth at the last Worlds, and will also meet Sweden in a Scandinavian derby. At every new World Championship, there's a new mascot. This year in Germany, Hannibal the Squirrel will accompany the players and spectators throughout the 17 days of competition. Regulars at the highest level, Angola, are preparing for their 14th appearance at a World Championship. The best performance to date from the African nation remains their seventh place in 2007. But in the 10 years since, Angola's progress has been continual, and they enjoyed a successful Olympics in Rio, reaching the quarter-finals where they only lost at the death to the eventual champions, Russia. Angola really have such accurate weapons. They're so, so physical. Really, their physical qualities are so impressive. Maybe they lack a little touch, a small step on the tactical side. 
To improve on that tactical side, Angola brought in the Dane Morten Sobak. The former coach of Brazil, with whom he won the world title in 2013, should allow the Angolans, the 12-time African champions, to go that extra step and surprise a few people in Germany. Hungary liked going to Germany. In 1965, the Magyars became world champions in the home of handball. 52 years later, the Hungarians would love to repeat that feat with a squad made up mostly of players who turn out for Jor, the leading women's team in Europe just now, who've won three of the last five Champions Leagues. European champions in 2000 and silver medalists at that year's Olympics in Sydney, the Hungarians have an impressive international track record, although the last podium finish at a major tournament came five years ago when they took bronze at Euro 2012. A 15th place finish in 2013 after a long absence from the competition. The Czech Republic of Petra Ruchkova and Iveta Luzumova have only featured at one of the last six world championships. Eliminated by Norway in the last 16 four years ago, the Czechs will hope to cause a surprise or two this time. For us it's possible. We, we are hungry and uh, I think uh, we have a good team. We have the best team for the last uh, maybe five years. Go uh, be maybe second on the second place uh, in the group and go up. Slovenia's men's team shone back in January by taking bronze at the World Championship in France, but the Slovenian women are preparing for just their fifth appearance at the World Championship. 12 years after their last appearance, they're aiming to be party poopers in Group A, also featuring the likes of France and Spain. Nobody in our team has ever played at a World Championship, not even me. It was a dream for me. I was very happy that we qualified for the World Championship. We'll go there to see what we can do and also to be a nuisance to some of the teams. Slovenia could call on the right back Anna Gross of French side Mess as well as Uroš Bregar, the national coach who's also in charge of leading club side Krim. However, Slovenia must do without their captain Nina Jericek, who retired after helping her country qualify for the finals. It was a very special match for me, all the more so because I was playing in my hometown where I started playing handball. I wanted to help the girls qualify for the World Championship. I knew we were capable and now we have enough experience. We were so motivated and I'm very pleased that we've made it. European runners-up in 2010, bronze medalists at Euro 2014, Sweden are accustomed to podium finishes at continental level. However, the Scandinavians have never done better than sixth place at a world championship, but in Germany they could surprise a few people. The Swedes have plenty about them, of course, with Isabel Gulden, who is still leading the way. They have Jakobsen, Sand, so they really do have a great team. And so this could be the chance for them at this World Championship to get their first medal. It's true that the Swedes have not won as many medals as they would have liked. They tend to get them at the Euros. They have a great team with some really, really good players. Louise Sand is someone we know well and who now plays in the French League, and Hagman is the other winger on the right. Right. Golden is the playmaker and is a fantastic centre back. They have what it takes to go and win a medal. So, Sweden are a respected team of whom much is expected, and they'll take on world champions Norway in a derby match that should also be the Group B decider. Yeah, it's always a derby. <laughs> but I think Sweden has a really good team. I think that if we don't do our best, we can lose. If Sweden are a current great handball nation who've never won a medal at a women's world championship, South Korea are a former leading nation who have enjoyed glory in the past. In 1995, the South Koreans became world champions by beating Hungary in the final. They've been Asian champions 15 times and have also won the Olympic title twice in Seoul in 1988 and in Barcelona in 1992. After coming 14th at the last world championship two years ago, here they'll be looking to return to the glories of yesteryear.
the 20th of August 2016 in Rio de Janeiro, and the France team proudly display their medals. It wasn't gold, but silver after their defeat in the final to Russia. But it was a first medal at the Olympics for the French women's team. Four months later, Les Bleus claimed another international medal, this time taking bronze at Euro 2016 by beating Denmark in the third place game. Never two without three goes the French saying, so in Germany, Olivier Krumpholz and his girls will hope to make it three medals in three major competitions. I think we're capable of another podium finish. And when you're lucky enough to get such experiences, it gives you a taste for more. Those recent podiums have sated our appetite, and now we're hungry for more. Gold, gold, that's a real aim for us because we feel we're always making progress and that we can still progress further, improve and do better. Next year, France will host the European Championship from the 29th of November to the 16th of December 2018. Olivier Krumpholz's team have set themselves the number one aim of winning that competition on home soil. It's obvious that the more people talk about France's women's team, the better it will be for ticket sales. So we're looking to do well at the World Championship and to get people talking about us even more. From a sporting viewpoint, a competition as important as the World Championship can only help us. Clearly, between now and Euro 2018 in France, our objective is to get a gold medal. Euro 2018 is more important for us, but if we can do something in this competition, then we will. We are competitors, and we always want to win everything. Since Olivier Krumpholz first arrived as coach of France in 1998, Les Bleus have made constant progress, winning their first world title in 2003. They've also won three World Championship silver medals, Olympic silver and three European bronze medals in the space of 20 years. He's demanding in everything he does. He's passionate about handball. France have won eight medals since 1999, and they've always come with him as coach. Having a method and always looking to evolve, I think we're extremely demanding in certain sectors, especially in defence all over the court. We work well as a team, and I think the girls get on well and are good people. The staff are good people too, we're passionate, enthusiastic, and the girls appreciate that. Krumboltz's method is first of all tactical, but then I think he's always been capable of finding that little extra bit of spirit you need in the big moments to finish on the podium, rather than coming fifth or sixth. He's a passionate person. Person. I also think he has a great backroom staff. He's a hard worker, he knows his players well too. The Krumboltz method, I would say, is to stake everything on the defence. That is really his thing. For a number of years now, France have possessed one of the best defences in the world. They have top-level goalkeepers in Amandine Leno, Cléopatre Darleau and Laura Gloser. However, Gloser is expecting a child and will be missing in Germany. Now we know that Laura Gloser will be absent, but I think Cleopatra Dahle is desperate to go to another major competition. And then there's Amandine Leno. It is the position where I imagine Olivier Krumboltz has fewest worries because he has options. Whoever he chooses will be able to work well with one another. So it will be a winning gamble, whatever happens. For me, Laura is, above all else, a great friend. On the court, I'm really going to miss her, whether it be at club level or with the France team, because we've been playing together for seven years. There was a certain balance too with Laura and Amandine Leno. We had a good goalkeeping duo. But we have very good goalkeepers in France, like Cléopatre Darleux, Catherine Gabriel and Julie Foggia. So I think we'll be fine. Another notable absentee will be Alison Pinot. The centre-back has undergone an operation on her right ankle and will miss the World Championship. But despite that, France are hoping to shine in Germany. It all begins for them on the 2nd of December when they face Slovenia in Trier in Group A. France will also come up against Angola, Spain, Romania and Paraguay as they look to finish on top of their section.
2015, a glorious year for Norway. At the last World Championship in Denmark, the Norwegians claimed their third world title. The success of Torio Helgerisson's side two years ago was thanks in large part to the performances of three players who were at the very top of their game. Stina Oftedal, Nora Mork and Heidi Lucke, who all featured in the team of the tournament. Oftedal was named the best player in the French league three times during her spell with EC Paris and is considered the best centre-back in the world. Selfless and clinical, she now turns out for the Hungarians, Dior, with whom she hopes to get her hands on the Champions League trophy. With her country, she's won five international gold medals and dreams of a sixth in Germany. Alongside her at the back for Norway is Nora Mork. The Oslo native was named the best right back at the 2015 World Championship. Scorer of 41 goals in the competition, she's a star for country and club. With Larvik and Jor, she has twice won the Champions League. Heidi Lucke will turn at 35 on the 12th of December during the World Championship in Germany. The pivot has been turning out for Norway for 11 years now. A three-time European champion, double world champion and Olympic champion in 2012, Lucke is one of the most successful players of all time. While there were three Norwegians in the 2015 All-Star team, there were also two Romanians. With 63 goals in Denmark, Kristina Neagu was the top scorer in the tournament. The CSM Bucharest left-back has also been voted World Player of the Year three times in 2010, 2015 and 2016. In front of her, on the left wing, her compatriot Valentina Ardian. Now 35, she'll be one of the most experienced players at this World Championship. Ardian was part of the team that claimed the silver medal in Russia in 2005. Jovanka Radicevic was voted the best right winger at the last World Championship after scoring an impressive 60 goals at a 71% conversion rate. That made Radicevic, who plays for Vardar Skopje, the second top scorer. And finally, in goal, Tess Vester. The Dutch goalkeeper made 120 saves, a success rate of 43%. Vester, who plays at club level in Germany for Bietigheim, will want to again shine in her adopted country in December. Prior to December 2013, mentioning Brazil would only have brought to mind the likes of Ronaldo, Pelé or Romário. But four years ago, Brazil briefly forgot about football as handball took centre stage. By beating the host Serbia 22-20 in the final in Belgrade, the Brazilians became world champions for the first time in their history. And for the first time since South Korea in 1995, a non-European nation took the title. Yes, uh, handball, it's, uh, it's not uh, the favourite sport of the Brazilian, but uh, we have now a big, uh, let's say, community. After World Championship, a lot of persons start to follow us, so a lot of persons watch us in Europe. Brazil's run when they won the world title in 2013 was magnificent. They've undergone a number of changes, but they should still be a dangerous team and difficult to beat. Four years on from that coronation, the Brazil squad has a more youthful look to it. Pivots Piedad and Diniz have retired from the international scene and the Silasao's focus is now on young players with a new coach in Jorge Duenas. The former Spain coach led La Roca to silver at Euro 2008 and bronze at the 2011 World Championship held in Brazil. I think Duanias can bring something extra to the defence. Morten Subak, who was there before, was more focused on the attack. Duanias likes to consolidate his team and build their game around a very solid defence. Well, I think for Brazil you can expect a good defence. I think this is our uh, strength and that we are never going to give up any match. Named the best player at the 2013 tournament in Serbia and then World Player of the Year in 2014, the experienced Eduardo Amorim will be one of the key players in Jorge Duenas new look side. A two-time Champions League winner with Jor in Hungary, she'll be a leader for her team at both ends of the court. 
There are six or seven of the older heads left, including Amorim, who's the key player in this team. I think they'll do great things at the World Championship. I think the number of young now is it's bigger. Anything can happen. I think uh, we, we will fight. Uh, I cannot promise anything. I just can promise that we will fight. Eduarda Amorim is such a complete player who brings so much to her team. She provides stability and experience. Another one who is really in great form is Ana Paula Rodriguez. She's been on cloud nine for some time, for several months, from her pre-season and on to the start of the season. And then there are the experienced goalkeepers in Maisa Pessoa and Aaron Hart, so they have plenty of options. Brazil will be in Group C in Oldenburg, where they'll come up against Russia, the reigning Olympic champions, and Denmark, three-time Olympic champions between 1996 and 2004. Romania will be a team to look out for in Germany, their bronze medal at the last World Championship suggesting they could again make an impression here. Victory against Poland in the third place game two years ago in Denmark allowed the Romanians to claim the fifth international medal of their history. I was uh, very happy, I was there and it was a very, very <laughs> good moment for me and in in for the team. All of us, we want to repeat this, uh, this uh, nice moment, but the team is changed and uh, we try to, to take just step by step. Like many other nations at the 2017 World Championship, Romania are a team in transition. Some of the older heads have moved on and younger faces have come in. But Cristina Neagu is still there. The three-time World Player of the Year and the top scorer at the last Worlds in Denmark will again be the spearhead. Neagu, she's the, <laughs> she's the best player of the, of the Christina Neagu has been World Player of the Year three times and for me she is as pure a talent as they come. Neagu is Mrs. Handball. Her game is of such quality, her vision and especially her shooting. I remember her when she was just setting out and I was still playing. At the 2007 World Championship in France, where I was the goalkeeper and we played Romania in the quarter-finals, that Romania got through to the semi-finals was thanks to her. The quality of her shooting, her finishing with the wrist. She can put the ball to the right or the left. You need to work it out because her timing is not necessarily like what you normally see. The Romanians will head to Germany under Ambros Martin. The Spaniard is also the coach of Hungarian side Dior, with whom he's won the Champions League three times. He's a very good uh, coach. <laughs> also, it's a pleasure to, uh, to work with him. He trusts in the young players, he trusts in every, every player. And I don't know, I think this is very important. And he is a motivational uh, coach. And I think this is very good for, for us, for our mentality. Ambros Martin and Romania will begin the competition on the 2nd of December against Paraguay in Trier. That should be a fairly comfortable first run out for them before they take on the bigger guns in Angola, Spain and France. Another of the favourites are the Netherlands. Two years ago in Denmark, the Dutch flaunted their class and only Norway managed to beat a side who were new as a force on the world scene. They lost in the final to the Scandinavians, but the silver medal was their first of any kind at international level. I think where we were so full of happiness and uh, we were really proud. And even though the final was a really bad game, but still we were really happy with the, the silver medal. And we felt finally we achieved something in handball in, in Holland. A year later, Lois Abing and her teammates got to the final of Euro 2016. Once again, the Netherlands lost to Norway. But with two silver medals in two years, they are now among the forces to be reckoned with. We all have one goal and that's gold medal, of course. For me, they're one of the four favourites and they're capable of winning another medal. So far, they've not been able to beat the Norwegians at the end of a competition. But why not? They could do it this time. 
pour l'instant, leur bête noire, c'est la Norvège. Pour le moment, Norway est leur bête noire, mais ils sont capables de scorer 30 goals dans chaque match sans problème. Ils ont une bonne équipe, une solide défense, une très forte pivot et des joueurs qui sont impressifs de finir. Les Netherlands aussi boast un peerless goalkeeper. Tess Vester was voted the best goalkeeper of the tournament at the last World Championship two years ago. Since 2011, she has plied her trade in the Bundesliga, and after starring for Oldenburg, she's now with Bietigheim. I think uh, she's still one of the best goalkeepers because uh, I think she plays very good for our national team and she's very important for us. Uh, we need uh, Tess to be good because we need a good goalkeeper behind us to play our, our game as well, so uh, we really hope that she will play just as good as she did two years ago. She's been the asset that has given them that something extra to go on and win medals. She's quite extraordinary in the way she keeps goal. She's always well positioned and has great vision of the game. She sees well and senses what's coming. She's a young goalkeeper but reads the game so well and I think she'll pose problems to many players shooting at her. The Netherlands will play their group games in Leipzig. There, the Orania will come up against the likes of Serbia, runners-up in 2013, and hosts Germany, who they'll face on the final day in Group D in what is likely to be a decider for top spot. Denmark is, along with Germany, the cradle of handball. So it's no surprise that the Danish national team is one of the strongest around. Olympic champions three times in a row in 1996, 2000 and 2004. That eight-year reign also saw them win a world title in 1997 and two European crowns. But since the Athens Olympics, the Danes have won just the one medal, a bronze at the 2013 World Championship in Serbia. So Christina Christiansen and co will be eager to climb back onto the podium. That's always the question with Denmark. Is it the right time for them to maybe finally win a game? There's Denmark and a few other teams of whom not much might be expected, but who could spring a surprise. They've transformed the way they play a little bit. The coach Klaus Brun Jorgensen came from the men's game and has tried to instill a bit more of a masculine culture. So let's see what they do. They will of course have ambitions to make it to the last 16 and go further to reach the semi-finals, I think. To go far in the competition, the Danes will have to come through a Group C containing the reigning Olympic champions Russia, 2013 world champions Brazil and Montenegro. Montenegro are one of a number of national teams going through a period of transformation. But this little country of barely 660,000 inhabitants is capable of shining like they did in 2012. That year they claimed Olympic silver in London and then took European gold in Serbia. Five years on they've revised their objectives downwards but are hoping to surprise people. I expect just that we will fight like uh, the people used to watch, watch us and uh, I uh, expect uh, really hard games because we have a hard group and uh, just to fight and the result will come. Most of the Montenegrin team play for Budućnost, the club from the capital Podgorica who have twice won the Champions League in 2012 and 2015, proof of the importance of handball in Montenegro. It means a lot, it's the first sport in Montenegro and uh, we are a small country but uh, a lot of children look at us and uh, a lot of people believe in us so it's really important for Montenegro. In 2013, Serbia reached the final of their World Championship at home in Belgrade. Unfortunately for them, Sladana Poplazic and co came up short against Brazil in the final and so had to settle for a silver medal that left a bitter taste in a handball-loving nation. Since then, they've come 15th and then 9th at the following European Championships and 15th in Denmark two years ago while missing out on the Rio Olympics altogether. So this World Championship is the chance for the Balkan nation to regain some prestige. We are too flat and that means we have to run after them. Also among the outsiders are Poland, hoping to repeat their performance of two years ago. Then they eliminated Hungary and Russia to reach the semi-finals, where Kinga Akruk and her teammates went down to the Netherlands. Exhausted, two days later they lost to Romania in the third place game. The Polish squad has been in transition since then, but they'll be out to surprise in Germany.
There really have been a lot of changes, and they lean heavily on Ashruk, as well as the emblematic Kudlac. Poland are a team who are always there and manage to pull off a few results, especially with their star captain Kudlac. At the last World Championship, Spain were eliminated in the last 16, narrowly losing 22-21 to France. It was the same at the Rio Games, where Les Bleus beat La Roja in a tense quarter-final. This time the Spaniards, coached by Carlos Viver, are aiming to go the extra step and reach the last four as they seek to add to their tally of two European silver medals and one world bronze. They have a very competitive team and very good players. They've just brought in a new coach who's got rid of certain players like Marta Monge, who plays for Brest. So we'll see how they get on and how they settle. They're maybe not where they should be. They were maybe a little bit better in previous competitions. But they're a team who will again want to prove themselves and who'll stand up and be counted in the knockout matches. That's for sure. Close up and in one-on-ones, they're so difficult to play against. They never give up and they use the pivot very well. They don't have extraordinary physical qualities, but they play to their strengths and it works for them. Spain are in Group A, where they'll meet their Bête Noire, France. First place in the section is likely to be decided when the two eternal rivals meet in Trier on the 7th of December. African champions three times in their history, Tunisia are preparing to appear in their ninth World Championship since 1975. Led by their centre-back Mouna Sheba, who plays in France for Chambray, the African Championship runners-up face a tough challenge in Group C, the hardest in the competition, with Olympic champions Russia, Brazil and Denmark all in there as well. Two years ago in Denmark, the Tunisians finished last in their group with five defeats in as many games, although they did win twice in matches to determine their final placing. North Africans are hoping to do better this time and win at least one group game. The last time they did that was in Serbia four years ago when they beat Australia. Besides Angola and Tunisia, the third representative from the African continent in Germany will be Cameroon. Third at the last African Championship, the Cameroonians will be appearing at their second World Championship. On the first occasion in Russia in 2005, they finished 22nd after failing to win a match. So their objective is to try to win a match at this level for the first time, perhaps against China on the 8th of December in Leipzig. The Chinese, meanwhile, are heading for their 15th World Championship. They finished 17th two years ago and qualified this time by finishing third at the Asian Championship, beating Kazakhstan to take bronze. In Denmark in 2015, the Chinese managed three wins, beating Cuba, Japan and Argentina. So we'll attempt to better that record this time, and why not reach the last 16? Along with China and South Korea, Japan complete the Asian representation in Germany. In their 18th appearance at the Worlds, the Japanese will bid to win a match in a Group C featuring the likes of Russia, Brazil and Denmark. So they'll have their sights set on games against Montenegro and Tunisia in Oldenburg. 
Asian champions in 2004, the team from the land of the rising sun qualifying by virtue of coming second at the Asian Championships, losing to South Korea in the final. Argentina's men's team have made their mark on the world stage thanks to the Simone brothers, but the country's women have found it harder to compete at international level. Their path has often been barred by Brazil, so they've regularly had to settle for silver at the Pan American Championships. They're now heading for their ninth world championship since 1999. Two years ago at the last edition, the Albi Celeste won twice en route to finishing 18th, their best effort yet. Pan American silver medalists, Argentina will face reigning world champions Norway in Group B, as well as Sweden, Poland, Hungary and the Czech Republic. Along with Brazil and Argentina, Paraguay are the third South American nation to have qualified. They edged out Uruguay to take third place at the Pan American Championship and will be appearing at their third Worlds after 2007 and 2013. Bottom of a group featuring Spain four years ago in Serbia, the Paraguayans did nevertheless win two games against Australia and Algeria in the President's Cup to finish 21st overall. On the 20th of December 2009 in the Chinese city of Nanjing, Russia won their fourth world championship, beating France by a three-goal margin in the final. That was eight years ago, an eternity, and it was the last international title for Yevgeny Trefilov's team. But there was a renaissance in 2016. After the two Olympic titles won by the Soviet Union in 1976 and 1980, Russia won gold at the Rio Games. And like in 2009, France were their victims in the final. Competitive once again, the Russians are one of the major contenders for glory in Germany in December. Russia's aim is always to win. In Russia, we always say you have to win every match. We don't think twice. They have a reputation. The number of titles they've won back that up. So they'll want to grab this world championship with both hands and will do everything to win another gold. The Russians are regularly favourites in these competitions, like Norway and France. They're always impressive to watch. We wait to see what their squad will be, and every time there are new faces in the Russian team, young players who we've never seen on the international scene but who are competitive right away. With Irina Bliznova and Olga Akopian retiring from international competition after the Rio Games, the Russians are, like most other teams at the tournament, in transition. But the star of the Tsars, Anna Vyakireva, should be there in Germany, along with young prodigy Daria Dmitrieva. She's good technically, brilliant individually, and is a good person. She's super. They have stars like Dmitrieva and especially Vakireva, who I think is exceptional. The star of the Russian team for me is Vyakireva, the left-handed right back. He's a very dynamic player, a young player, but who gives the impression she's been there for years. The Russian squad is enhanced by the presence of Yevgeny Trefilov. Between 2001 and 2009, this emblematic figure in women's handball helped his country win four world titles. In 2016, after a three-year absence, he returned to the helm of a struggling side and Russia promptly became Olympic champions. Trefilov is known throughout other countries in the sport, but in Russia we also know him for the person he is away from the court. Of course, sometimes he can be hard, he always shouts, but I've learned a lot with him. He's a maximalist, he wants to win everything. Trefilov is really quite a peculiar coach. You get the impression he's constantly screaming at his players even though he loves them. But you could say that he's a coach who gets his message across slightly differently to in Western Europe. He maybe has a bit of a crazy side, but he wins everything. He's won Olympic titles, world championships. It's just in the European championships where he's not won a gold medal. But he's a great coach. He has a tactical finesse too, and it's always it's really interesting to try to work out what he's looking to put in place with his players. 
Yevgeny Trefilov and his team begin their campaign against Tunisia on the 2nd of December, but their main rivals will be Montenegro, Brazil and Denmark in a Group C that deserves to be labelled the Group of Death. In the last 20 years, five countries have shared the world titles between them – in Denmark, France, Russia, Brazil and Norway. Who will carve their name onto the trophy this time? The answer will be provided on the 17th of December in Hamburg.